Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show. Katie Hopkins joining me live from London, England. Hi, Katie. Hi, lovely. It's good to be back with you again. Well, let's start off with mm, politically bad news if you're a conservative. Uh, in the last week or so, Biden has been leaking out uh, more specifics about his agenda. And when I say Biden, I use that in quotes because nobody knows who's actually writing the copy. Um, it starts out with everything is going to be climate, climate, climate. Uh, he's resurrecting the um, almost imbecilic policies of John Kerry to be his climate czar, uh, having had him uh, audition by screwing up the Iran nuclear deal so horribly. Um, I know that there's going to be 11 million illegals that are going to be welcomed as Americans. Um, what do you make of this open border, everybody's welcome, Nobody has to follow the law to get into the country. New policy that's going to reverse virtually everything Trump did on immigration. I think trying to, um, you know, from a point of view of a Brit, I suppose, who've watched Europe and specifically my country be deluged by migrants, immigrants, illegals, and seen what happens, you know, as a result of that five years down the line. Um, and it's such a tragedy. And I think when you hear Biden say, America is back, you know, that's the line they're using, America is back. And from a British perspective, of course, looking at what happens when you deluge a country with people who don't actually belong there, and I will say it as clearly as that, is that no, America isn't back. What's about to happen is all the very best bits of everything that used to look and feel like America is about to be dissolved under a tidal wave of people who don't love your flag, who don't feel American in their hearts. And we have it here. You know, if I take a small example, I, th I think often the minutiae is what is the most revealing. The families that came to join us or young fighting age men from different backgrounds, outside the front door of their houses here in the UK, they throw their trash. They will open their front door and they will throw their trash outside their front door because for them, the bit they care about is inside their front door of their homes. And that's exactly the mentality of these people who come to countries, is they only care about themselves, their family, and that's it. The country they don't give one single hoot for. And I think it's so, it is, it is a horrible thing to see that they're going to try and undo the great work of Trump and should that Biden administration ever get into power, I think the distance between where America got to uh, in these last four years and where it's gonna end up in four years time is something really horrific. Well, I, I've never heard the trash story before, but I've been in various countries where literally that's what happens. If you're on the mm -hmm. second floor, uh, anybody walking by uh, in the street is a target because yeah. it's outside your home, not your yeah. problem anymore. And the stuff that gets thrown out is pretty gross. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the UK, I understand uh, you've got uh, a new tier system uh, with <laughs> COVID. What, what's the deal? I, I'm laughing, Barry, um, but mostly because of the madness. You know, sometimes in the face of utter madness, all you can do is laugh. We're in lockdown. I'm still, we're still in lockdown as we speak. We're about to move into a tier system. And of course we thought, sort of thought, oh, they'll give us back some freedom. Oh no. Basically they sold us a really dodgy wedding cake. They told us it would have three tiers. All that's happened is actually all of us are in the worst two tiers. We're in the tiers where you can't do anything. You can't go out, you can't go out to eat. You can't go out to mix with anybody. And if you're in tier three, you may as well just give up on life. Um, and so they put 99% of people 55 million Brits into the bottom worst two tiers. And, and you know, really, as you and I know, and as, as your lovely viewers and listeners know, you cannot try and rationalize the irrational. And that's what the mainstream's full of, is people saying, oh, but this is this, and so why can't we do that? You can't do that stuff. It's just mad. When you start making up rules, you cannot try and rationalize them. You have to see its madness. And one great thing that's come out of this, Barry, and I can feel it you know, around me on social media, is 
people are they're starting to realize this was all a madness this was craziness what this is now not right and in a way it's frustrating barry because obviously this has been since march and we're now pretty much december and it took all of that time but people are waking up more and more to that this is just nonsense but yeah we're in a new system and the new system basically says we're going to lock you down until next april well it sounds like britain is pushing a step too far, much like yeah. uh, a lot of America did this week with Thanksgiving, uh, our big family holiday, mm -hmm. non-denominational, where everybody travels. Actually, Thanksgiving week, um, historically, is the busiest travel week, even more than Christmas or New Year's, because the families get together. And the obscenities, uh, I don't mean cuss words, I mean the obscenities of the uh, virtual fiat laws, which are not laws created by these goofball governors, are outrageous. And many people, Democrats and Republicans, are, for a sense, uh, flipping off their own state governments by saying, I am not wearing a mask at my mom's Thanksgiving table. Thank you very much. And we can use the same platter and we can hug and kiss each other. And no, we're not going to eat out in the yard. Why? <laughs> because it's nuts. <laughs> so true. And of course, just what they do to you, they do to us. So we I just, just came away from the radio and they just articulated for us that at Christmas, uh, number one, we've got to sit outside. Let's remember where I am, it's not where you are. It's minus two degrees here. We're not sitting outside. And they said no board games. So, you know, family board games at Christmas, we might play fat. The, the latest rule is no board games at Christmas because you pass the same counters around. You know, I'm going to touch a counter and pass it. We're not allowed to play board games at Christmas. I mean, what level of minutiae of rule are they going to go down to? It's just... It is so crazy and I'm so sorry for everybody who had their Thanksgiving kind of muddled with, but I'm so proud of so many Americans who decided they were just going to do what they pleased. And I think that's exactly what I plan to do at Christmas as well. Well, the insanity of the Thanksgiving sitting six feet apart out in the yard, no enclosures, can't go to the bathroom under uh, most circumstances, can't touch the same platter, you know, the no singing, no loud talking. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah all that crap, it's, it's now gonna be enlarged to include the vaccines. What I'm reading is horrifying. Look, years ago, a doctor that was a friend of mine asked me, are you ever gonna get a flu shot? And I said, of course not. And he said, why? And I said, A, usually they don't work, B, True. In 20, 25% of the cases, they cause the flu. And C, I would rather have the flu than the vaccine with all the chemicals and preservatives and byproducts and side effects in my system. And besides, they don't work very well. Well, guess what has come out this week that the efficacy of one of the major vaccines that are being pushed here in the US that was uh, Flout, flouted at, uh, they flouted it at 90 something percent efficacy. Um, and then they gave it a second time to the same people thinking it would go up to like 98% and it dropped to 60. So <laughs> they can't even trust their own studies when no one's looking over their shoulder. And if you want to fly Qantas, I guess starting in January, you know, the Australian airline that goes all over the world on their big planes, you can't get on a plane without a vaccine. Are they gonna mandate it in England too? I think it's coming. I think mandatory vaccination is coming. We've had the same thing happen that you've had. I mean, how crazy is this? But uh, so they did a trial with 20,000 people. They told us this was the Oxford vaccine. They told us it was 90%, 90%, although of course we know that actually 99.7 point whatever percent of people would recover anyway. And it turns out during the trial to only 20,000 people, they got the trial wrong. They gave the wrong dosage 
but it turned out the wrong dosage was more effective than the right dosage and they tried to hide the fact that they stuffed that up. Now, if you can't get it right when you're only delivering it to 20,000 people, how on earth are you going to get it right when you deliver it to 5 million or so? But, you know, I've always been a believer that you, you don't take vaccines. I've never allowed them to force them into my son and they do that at the school system here. Um, and they and I can already feel them training up. They're training up their stooges to try and you know manipulate the thinking of people. So I, schools, I, I gotta they, I gotta ask you this quickie. Mm. Give me a short one on this. If it, let's say let's just say hypothetically, okay, let's say they come up with a vaccine that's a hundred percent. First of all, that it's impossible. But let's just yeah. say, play the game with me, and a gazillion people get it. If they're immune, right, because they've got the vaccine, Katie, why should you have to get it? Yeah. Because so true. they're immune. You got an answer for that? No, I don't have an answer for that other than I really don't want it. And, and so, you know, I suppose another question, Barry, is, and it's a question I can ask you, what, what would they take away from you that would make you say, okay, okay, I'll have it. So for me, I suppose that would be my ability, my passport, my ability to leave this country, travel, to get to America. I mean, those, I mean, I don't mind if they shut my children out of school, I'll homeschool. Um, if they take away my right to healthcare, I'm not that bothered. I don't like the socialized healthcare anyway. It will kill me rather than cure me. But flights, you know, I couldn't be, I couldn't be trapped here. Well, what could they take from you that would make you take the vaccine? Nothing. Mm. I shan't be leaving. You would just stay where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking the vaccine. Look, 99.7 something percent don't die. No. I'll take my risk with 0.02%. Yeah. And if I'm healthy, my percentage goes up to almost unanimously immune from death. And if God forbid I have some sort of pre-existing condition of morbidity, like I'm already dying of cancer or God forbid something like that, then I'll just stay home and I'll self-quarantine. I don't want your injection into my system uh, that you are gonna use to inject billions with God knows what, no thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. Also, if you have to store it at minus 70, how is it okay to then inject it into someone's arm? I mean, these are the crazy things that go on, but I'm with you. No vaccines, no messing around. And hopefully, um, you know, eventually there'll be airlines that are made for good people like ourselves that wouldn't have them. And then we'll be seated near people who are decent people that we quite like. Wouldn't that be a great thing? I'm with you. And maybe they'll give you food because they don't give food on flights anymore. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on Katie and Barry on ATP Report. And remember, for all of you out there in the United States, please text the message TRUTH to 88202. So you'll be subscribed automatically within a couple of seconds for our absolutely free of charge text message alert system. So you'll see all Katie and Barry's stuff and everything else American Truth Project puts out always for free, right on your cell phone automatically. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.